Wait, dude, how much does it weigh? What's up, everybody? I am not Jerem Pearson, and this is not your average bike video. Today, I have a special guest, Matt Albert. He's about to embark on an ultra endurance bike expedition, the Great Divide. Thanks so much for coming on, Matt. Thanks for having me, Jason. So super, sure. super exciting. I'm very envious of your, your undertaking. First of all, what is this bike ride? What is this route? It's originally a mountain bike route, is that correct? It's basically a route that goes from Banff, Canada down through the Rockies to the border of Mexico. It's mostly gravel roads. There's some little tiny bit of single track and a little bit of tiny bit of hike a bike for Maybe that thing. And you're gonna be doing the whole thing or? I'm starting uh, at the border of Mexico and going north and I'll get to the Canadian border and probably that'll be about it. Wow. Yeah. How many miles is the route? About 2,700. Holy smokes. And like roughly how long do you think that's gonna take you? 40-ish days, 40, 42, 45, something like that. Yeah. What are some noteworthy climbs or challenges that you're aware of that this bike route is gonna present? I'm starting on the south and going north because this year, for one, the, the west has had so much snow. Uh, there's still places that are snowed in. Uh -huh. um, although the, the tour divide, the race is happening right now and they're coming south. And so far they've been able to ride freely. But the highest point, Indiana Pass, is 11, 9, thousand feet. And that may still have snow on it. But, um, I, you know, coming from New England, I didn't want to start this ride up north and come down through the snow and have to trudge my bike through, you know, when it weighs 60 pounds or something through snow. And also because New Mexico is the most desolate part of it. And I figured in June, it's still not super hot. As I went north, things would be getting warmer anyway. And to get that sort of hard part out of the way, because as you go north, you encounter more towns, uh, better water supplies, better food, you know, all that kind of stuff becomes more prevalent. So that's the way I'm doing it. Josh Ibbett says there have been more bear encounters of people involved because the snowpack has forced them lower yeah, elevations. Lower, yes. I heard that food. today. I saw that today. Yeah, one guy said he had to wait 15 minutes for a bear to get out of the road. So if that's what I got to do, that's what I got to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I'd rather wait for him than have an issue. Are you going to bring in a bear spray? Uh, I can't bring it. I can't fly with it. So I get it while I'm out there. What are you most excited about? Oh, the views, good question. the challenge of it. The, the whole challenge of it. Uh, you know, to try and obviously to get it done in a reasonable amount of time is one, but trying to find my way around without getting too lost and, uh, you know, all that whole kind of thing. I've got maps, I've got paper maps, I've got GPX files and so hopefully that should make it fairly followable. You know, the whole thing is a challenge. The food issues, water, climbing, you know, riding a 60 to 70 pound bike through dirt roads. Yeah, that'll be fun, but it'll, you know, definitely challenges. When I go from New Mexico, I'll basically be climbing until Indiana Pass, which is the highest point. It's like two weeks of climbing. Wow. <laughs> That's the only downside of going north, really. You climb up into Colorado. Do you have special gearing for this trip? The stock front chain rings are a 3148, and I picked up a 3046, and then I got an 1140 for the rear, so I, my low is a 3040, which has worked so far on a couple practice trips. It's been fine, and as long as it's not super steep, it'll be fine, yeah. Have you done anything like this before? Never, no. And a little bit of one nighters, but you know, one or two nighters, but nothing this extensive. How have you trained for it? Uh, like I said, I did a couple practice trips with the bike fully loaded to test it out and see how it's going, but otherwise just riding. Describe in a little bit of detail what a practice trip is. Um, I did two one nighters. Uh, I rode from my house. I made a loop that was about 50 miles uh, out to uh, a park in New York and there's a little spot off the road. You just pull off and set up your stuff and camp. And then I rode home the next day. So I got to test out, you know, my stove and all that kind of stuff and carrying everything that I need. And how's it going to work over rough situations? I got to do some single track with it uh, both weekends. Everything stays put. Everything works well. A little tricky with all the weight on bumpy, you know, surfaces, but the tour isn't, isn't, that much of that. Do you think on some level the downhills might be more challenging than the uphills? Could be. I, at, at one point, 
uh, I got some head shake with the bike because I think all the weight on the front end, but yeah. that's what brakes are for. <laughs> And yes, I brought extra brake pads. When did you decide you were going to do this? I think about last November or so. Yeah. Cool. So I've been planning it. And I made a timeline of what I needed to get done when, and everything's gone pretty smooth. I overhauled the bike. and. Do you feel like there's any like specific source of inspiration to do this? Any experience that you may have had during at some point biking where you're like, I really want to take on a huge challenge? Uh, there have been different... Um, scenarios in life that have said to me that I need to go out and do something really big on my own. So that's what I decided to do. Do you want to share a little bit about <clears throat> some of those things or are these personal? Or? Personal stuff, yeah. yeah. Life, life growth issues. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. that's what's prompted the trip and that's, uh, you know, a whole big part of it is what I'm going to learn when I'm out there. Yeah. I have a friend who uh, fairly into bike, he's like, Better than therapy, better than shrimp. Getting out on the bike for a few hours is a great way to clear that. So. Yeah, and there have been lots of articles I've read. People who, you know, come back from military staff or, you know, when they have PTSD, whatever, getting out in nature for a long time like that is a huge help for people. Sort of a follow up question with training. I guess you've sort of answered this, but how are you mentally training for this? I don't know that you can unless you've done it already. <laughs> uh, Good answer. You know, because there's definitely going to be stuff that I'm going to encounter that I've never had before. Either big winds or hail or, you know, getting caught out with no shelter whatsoever in a storm. Who knows? But uh, try and stay off the peaks during the afternoons in Colorado is big. Yeah. Yeah, so during the big mountain stages, we can call them that. Will you be, what's your wake up time, departure time? I don't have one. I didn't set a time for myself every day. Uh, I generally wake up early anyway. Like when the sun comes up, I'm guessing by, you know, seven or eight o'clock in the morning, I'll be rolling, see what happens every day. That's all you can do. <laughs> but many? sort of plan, you know, because I have the paper maps and they tell you distances between certain places. And so I can figure out a day or two ahead of time where I might want to go. Maybe I have to get up early one day and start at five in the morning uh, to get over some pass by the afternoon or something, yeah. Do you have a sense of how many hours or miles you're planning to do a day? Well, I'm hoping to get at least an average of 50 a day. I saw a video of a guy and his 13-year-old daughter that did it in 37 days. So I figure I should be able to do this in like 40, 42, whatever, something like that. Do you have a rough idea how many hours a day that might be? You know, because you have nothing else to do, right? You're riding your bike, it'll depend on the day. You know, if you're going to get a storm, maybe you get two or three hours in, or who knows? Um, maybe you get 10 hours someday and you get 100 miles in. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, nice. I, I, I'm imagining uh, that the first couple weeks are going to be training <laughs> into the ride. So after that, I think it'll, it should go pretty well. Any odd or unique training recovery strategies or, or nutrition? I've been really cognizant of what I need every day. So uh, I'm going to have a lot of water with me and nutritional supplements to keep up with that kind of stuff. I bought a lot of prepared dehydrated foods so I can just have that be easy and quick when you get to camp or when you get up in the morning. I make a lot of my own bars to eat during the day so I can tailor that to what I need. Joe Bikes, or there's some YouTuber who's doing the gravel rides. He was saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to bulk up or eat a lot of fat or try to add some weight before I do a big expedition like this. Huh. Have you considered that or? No, no, not really, but it's not a bad idea. <laughs> Next few days, but I, I've been doing a little bit of upper body stuff as well. When we first met, was it a week ago, you had mentioned that you were gonna have a friend mail you some things. Yeah, I bought a whole bunch of meals. So I packed boxes with 12 meals, which I figure there will be one day anyway where I'll be able to get food elsewhere. I got meals for six days, plus um, bars and extra stuff that I might need. I've picked out points along the route where somebody's going to mail me a box. About every 400 miles, I'll get to a new box. And That'll help motivate you. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> So I have to get to the next point in time. Are you, or is it possible for, for people to follow you along with some kind of GPS tracking? Yeah, I have a, uh, a Garmin 
link. When I turn the tracker on every day, it'll send out a ping every hour and it'll just show where I am. That uh, and the Garmin are probably the best places, yeah. Any chance you'll be able to take some photos or videos? I'm or sure I will. Hopefully not of a bear attacking me or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Because, uh, you know, that'd be cool to have a little, <clears throat> little follow-up. I'm sure that there's going to be places that just blow my mind out there because I've seen stuff on videos. But, you know, it's way different when you're there, and it's way different than photos. And you can't transfer that experience through a photo or even a video. Sounds like it's going to be an amazing trip. It will be, for sure. All right, let's For jump. lots of reasons. Let's jump into the uh, bike check. <clears throat> I'm using my 21 Diverge. I'm using the stock wheels and I put Rennie Hurst 48s on it. Specialized says 47, I figured one more millimeter wasn't so bad, but they're a nice cushy tire. I can run them at 30 pounds and, and they're great on gravel roads with all the weight like that. It's, that volume is super nice. I had a frame bag custom made for the bike and a couple of other bags that generally would go in the four tubes, but with the amount of water that I require, I, I got water on the four tubes and the other bags will go on the rack. So I had to put a rack on the bike just to be able to carry all the other stuff I had, but I've got, you know, a tent and sleeping bag and all that kind of stuff and a few bits of clothes and my food. And that's basically it. I had uh, this bag made specifically for the frame. Uh, this is a standard top two bag, and then I had a couple of other bags made. Fort Leap seat pack. This is a Swift Industries bag, which I already wore a hole in, but I got a rack coming, so <laughs> that, that'll keep it up out of the way. But I have all my food in here, plus a couple other small items. I'm gonna have my clothes in here, extra water, my tent, sleeping bag, puffy jacket, sleeping pad, and in these small bags, I have my stove, bug repellent, sunscreen, first aid kit, toiletries, you know, all that kind of stuff, headlamp. The other thing I have is my water pack, um, which I have my rain clothes in, plus another three liters of water, some tools. I can carry a few snacks right off thing because of how it fits on me. So that's gonna be super helpful. I have a pair of tights, socks, a jersey, some clothes for sleeping in. Specifically, I was I read that that's something you should do is have just specific sleeping clothes. Some of that stuff actually isn't even in here yet, but you really don't A, need much and or wear much during the trip. All right, dream crusher time. Is it says 231.4? Holy cow, guy. So 235, because I don't have my water pack full, minus 155 is uh... Is that 80 pounds? Matt, I didn't ask when you're leaving. Friday, Holy June 16th, I fly out, start riding on Sunday the 18th. Gonna be an adventure. Adventure <laughs> of a lifetime. Yeah.